Hi guys, I'm Elle and welcome back to Just Iron Nick. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's video. And today I want to talk to you guys about how to participate in secondhand September. So stay tuned for the rest of the video. So you're probably thinking, what is Secondhand September? Well, it's actually a campaign run by Oxfam in the pursuit of advocating about the effects of fast fashion. It really emphasizes you to think about secondhand as a solution to all the environmental and social effects that fashion has on the earth. So by buying secondhand, it can really be beneficial not only for yourself, but the environment. Since fast fashion is unsustainable, I do want to give you a little bit of facts so you can have a better idea if you're not familiar with how fast fashion is affecting Earth. So it's actually good to know that actually 95% of our clothing can either be recycled or upcycled. And upcycle means just making it into a new garment. And did you know that it takes about three years for a normal human to drink the amount of water it takes to produce one t-shirt? And by doubling the useful life of clothing from one year to two years can actually reduce carbon emissions of that piece of clothing by 24%. And this is why secondhand is so important. Consider taking Oxham's pledge by buying secondhand for 30 days. However, I do want to help you in this process so if you're curious about how to buy secondhand watch the rest of the video so my first tip is to buy from thrift stores this may sound very simple but it can get complicated and there can be a lot of things that you may not really know about thrift stores so the first thing is is that thrift stores are really cheap and they're super accessible to a lot of different people that may not be able to afford luxury pieces or may think that fast fashion is a little bit too expensive for them. And if you're more of a privileged consumer that has never gone to thrift stores, don't feel like you have to go to high-end boutiques or high-end thrift stores. Instead, I recommend you as a first timer to just enjoy the process. And if you do wanna go to more high-end boutiques or more high-end thrift stores, go for it. Just feel what you think is comfortable for yourself, but don't pressure yourself and excluding yourself from normal thrift stores. Now I found some really great tips when you're buying from thrift stores by at s sustainability underscore. She's an amazing Instagrammer. She does a lot of infographics. Her name is Gaia. I love her name. But these are some of the tips that I was inspired to tell you guys today by her posts. So feel free to follow her if you can. If you want to be more intentional about thrift shopping, please take your time. It's really hard to find an outfit if you're rushing around, if you're worried about this or you're worried about that. So just clear two hours and really be aware of what you're doing. Also, a great thing to log out for is thrift stores that have a charitable cause. I love going to thrift stores that gives back to its communities. So I go to like Catholic or religious based thrift stores that give back to their community. So make sure that they have a mission besides, you know, providing jobs and you know, getting money. I think those things are great, but we should look for things that actually help our local community versus just our local economy. One of the best ways to have a list of the things that you need versus what you want is by going through your closet and really seeing what you don't have. So let's say for fall, you really need sweaters. Put that on your list. What sort of sweaters do you want? Do you want high neck sweaters? Do you want the crew neck sweaters? Do you want purple sweaters? Do you want green sweaters? Make sure to think about that before going to the store because it can get really easy to just put everything in the cart and just try to justify it by saying, oh, but I needed sweaters. So it is really useful to know your purpose and to not get distracted. This way you can prevent unnecessary purchases that will not be used. It also really helps that you know your style so you can buy things that really fit your body and have things that you really like in your closet. But obviously this takes time if you don't know your style. A mood board can be as simple as going on Pinterest and seeing lots of different pictures of different clothing styles and colors and aesthetics. I think this will really help you if you have yet to formulate a style. And I think a style is really important because it reflects who you are and what you like and what you're comfortable in. And I think it's important to note that I think it's really important that you do mood boards on Pinterest so you can really save money and time going through thrift stores or going to stores and trying to figure out your style there. You can make a lot of unnecessary purchases through this process. So when you're actually in the thrift store, 
make sure to try on everything that you put in your cart. I think this will really help you to figure out which things that you actually want versus the things that you thought were cute when you saw them hanging on the rack. It can be very different how you see clothing on a rack to how it's on your body because you don't know how it will squeeze your arms or how it will fit at the neck. So just make sure to try it on. If it helps, maybe take a selfie, see how it looks from a different angle. And just try to make sure that you're completely in love with it because if you're not completely in love with it, you will most likely get rid of it. And that can cause a lot of environmental effects on the earth. And it can be super easy for it to end up in the landfill if you're not intentional on donating back to the thrift store or giving it to a friend. If you want a little bit more thrifting tips on retro vintage vibes and pieces, I highly recommend Ali Vera's YouTube channel. She takes you along to her thrift store adventures and she shows us all her thrift finds, so I highly recommend her. Also, when you're buying secondhand, always make sure to look out for stains and holes. Clothing that is used are often not in the most perfect condition and that's why I think you need to really be careful about taking your time because it can be easy to let something slip through your eyes if you're just going from rack to rack because there's so many options you may get lost in the racks. So my next tip is to actually ask for the return policy if you're unfamiliar with the store or you're new with the store or if you're really not sure, always ask about the return policy because I think this is really important for you to to be able to return clothing that you may have not fallen in love with after it came home. I think this will help you prevent throwing away your clothing or not knowing where to donate your clothing. So always make sure you can get your money back if you make a purchase that you're no longer happy with. Now my last tip when you're buying secondhand is to try looking for unisex options. I think versatile and basic pieces to your closet really helps in you reusing your clothing and wearing them more often. Obviously I don't want you to sacrifice your style but I think it is a good idea to have like basic t-shirts and basic pants just so that you can have them and you can often rewear them and they can be a staple in your closet for years to come. So I highly recommend you to buy those secondhand but if you can't or or you don't want to sacrifice your style for that option it's perfectly okay but it's just a suggestion now I just quickly want to run through the don'ts of when you're going secondhand shopping so don't be picky this is because you can always repair and reconceptualize clothing once it's at your house but obviously this can't be done by everyone because they lack the skills but don't try to be too picky because you'll end up not liking anything if you do and please don't buy anything just because it's cheap this is not very intentional and you'll just end up with a whole bunch of clothing and please don't expect to buy something every time you go to a thrift store I think this will just cause your closet to be overfilled with things that are not something that you completely love try to find things that are your size I think it isn't really convenient for you to buy things that are a little bit larger for you so I always try to find things that suit you and also it's okay to buy things that are not in season just because we're in summer doesn't mean that we can't prepare for fall or for winter make sure to do things that are in accordance with your needs and don't feel like you should be embarrassed if you're buying a coat in the middle of the summer Hopefully those tips helped you in getting an idea on how you can buy from thrift stores and hopefully that can incentivize you in shopping secondhand. But I do really think these tips are relevant for my following suggestions and how you can get involved in secondhand September, so keep staying tuned. So another way that you can participate in secondhand September is by buying from online secondhand sellers and I highly recommend you buying from BIPOC online secondhand stores. I'll leave them in my description but I think right now where we need more racial equality I think it's really great if you could elevate and uplift businesses so leave their businesses down in the description and I highly recommend you check them out. Now another way that you can participate in secondhand September is by posting on your social media platforms how you are shopping secondhand. I think this is super powerful because you're using your own platform and your own voice to really advocate for something. This can start conversation with your friends and can get your family involved if that's what you want. If you do post on your social medias, please use the hashtag secondhand September and tag Oxham GB. Now my second to last tip on how you can participate in secondhand September is by not throwing away your clothing. If you're going to shop intentionally and thrift intentionally whether online or in person i really do advocate that you donate all your clothing to these charitable thrift stores 
or resell them on your own eBay, on your own Depop, or your own Poshmark. Make sure to never throw away your clothing in the landfill and try to be creative. You can do clothing swaps, you can give away your clothing, you can do garage sales. Whatever it is that you do, please make sure you're not throwing away your clothing because this is very, very damaging to our environment. Now finally, the last way you can participate is by upcycling your clothing. This will take a little bit more time and effort, but I think if you recreate your clothing into something new and into something awesome and creative in your own liking, I think it will place a much more meaningful value to your clothing and you can say, wow, I did that, I embroidered it, I sewed it, I pieced it together. And I think it's important to note that there's actually upcycling designers that turn old clothing into new new clothing so if you want to support my favorites it'll be left in the description hopefully you enjoy this video thank you so much for listening and hopefully you're now inspired to create more of a circular economy and to take the pledge with oxfam i look forward to all your comments and feel free to like this video and subscribe and please let me know if you liked anything that i said i would love your feedback and stay safe guys peace and love bye